Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and today let's make a clothespin bag, but it doesn't mean we need to put clothespins in that bag. The fabric I'm going to use today is from Timeless Treasures. It's a very beautiful line. We're going to need four fat quarters. We're going to need a circle, so any little bread and butter plate will work fine. You just need to make a hole that you're going to be able to get your hand in and the clothes pins out. So this is the size of the opening. And we're going to need a small hanger. This is a child's hanger, but you can get one even a little bit smaller that is made for infant's clothing. It just needs to have a little bit of strength to it to hold the weight of the pins. So the first thing we need to do is press our fabric. I have four fat quarters, 18 inches by 22 inches. And this can just be an approximate. Use whatever fabric you have on hand. I need four pieces the same size. Two fabrics are going to be the inside of the bag. Then we're going to have the outside front and the outside back. We're going to start working on the front of the bag. We need the front and the back of that front fabric. This piece is the piece that you're going to see through the hole. Start by placing both fabrics right side together. We need to determine where we're going to put the opening of the bag. And it won't matter what side of the fabric we mark on, it'll work out the same. The first thing we need to do is find a center mark. And I find it's just as easy if I take my fabric, fold it in half, and just put a hand press. Where that fold line is, we're going to put the top of the hanger. We need to leave a little bit of room for a seam allowance up at the top, but we're not sewing this right now. We just want to place it here so we know where to put the opening of the bag. If the opening is too close to the top, our hand will get caught on the top of the hanger. If it's too close to the bottom, we're going to lose all the storage space. That fold line will also help us center up the plate. Once I've determined where I'm going to have the opening, I'm going to be able to trace around the plate. This line is going to be a stitching line. By using a small stitch on your sewing machine, it's going to be easy to turn the corners. On my Bernina, my stitch length was set at a two. From here, we can cut out this circle. You're going to need to leave about a quarter inch seam allowance and cut out this center. Pick up the fabric, fold it a little bit, and you're gonna be able to start with a little snip. We're cutting so that the stitching line stays on the fabric and that center piece will have no stitching on it. You don't have to measure, just cut out that circle. We need to clip this fabric so that it goes right to the edge of that stitching line. Being careful not to snip those threads. If you do stitch those threads, it's fine. We can always restitch another seam. The space to cut should be about a quarter of an inch. Because of these little clipped edges, we're going to be able to turn the bag and have a beautiful circle. Just take the one edge and flip it to the other side. That whole piece is going to be able to be turned. So both sides are now outside. Without any pressing, you can already see how well this is going to lay flat. Take a quick glance and make sure that all of your threads are still secured and iron it flat. If you find that yours is not laying flat, it could be that those little snips didn't get close enough to that row of stitching. When I look at the inside, those pieces have fanned out. And that fanned out position is what's helping this lay flat. So if it's not close enough to that stitching line, it's not going to stay flat. You can always go in and do a little snip if you find an area that's not lying flat. We can do one row of top stitching all the way around. Now this is a great chance to use some decorative stitches on your machine. On my Bernina, I use stitch number 123. Take the top edge of the bag and just fold over a seam allowance. So both edges are going to be turned over and matched up along the top. Top stitch those two edges together just in a little bit in that center. That measurement we need just for this little area. We get to work on the back of the bag. Place right sides together and stitch a seam allowance along the top edge. When that seam is stitched, fold the bag right sides together and just press those seams flat. I have the little top seam stitched and that seam along the top. Match up right sides together. It'll be easier if you work from it. See in that circle. And 
match up that top edge. And we can fold that top piece in half to find that halfway mark just by matching up that circle and fold. We can now see that fold mark and we're going to use that as a guide. This hanger center piece needs to go on that fold. We can now trace the top edges of the hanger. Once our top line has been drawn, we're going to be able to square this bag up. I'm going to use the center line and just make sure that that bottom is squared up and the sides are squared up. I like to make sure that I have the same measurement from that center over on both sides. And in my case, I have four and a half inches. One thing to keep in mind is that your seam is not going to be stitched through the center of the hanger. We will need a little seam allowance. The width of my bag works to be about 16 and a half inches and about 20 and a half inches. And I do trim with all of my layers together and that way I know they're the same. There are two ways we can finish off this bag. We can continue drawing that line right to the seam allowance and stitch that angle that we drew all the way around coming back up. And be sure to leave a little space up at the top so that the hanger can come in after. You can either do a zigzag or a serge stitch all the way around and finish off the bag just the way it is. When the bag is turned right side out, the hanger will go in and that little point is going to peek out the top. But there is a way we can do this to make it reversible. Make sure that your four layers are together so that the two fronts are facing and the two backs are on the back side. You'll be able to take this back piece and flip it right over top. So I'm holding the three layers and this back layer is going to be able to come right over top. So here is my original seam that I sewed those two pieces together on the back. We have that top piece with the hole in between those two layers. We now need to find that center mark and I do like just folding it in half. Rub a little mark in that seam allowance and put a pin so you can see where it is. I'm going to be able to redraw my hanger. I will need to leave a little bit of a space for this hanger to come out and now I can draw those lines. I'm just going to extend that line right to the edge and do it on both sides. Be sure you still have that space up at the top for the hanger to go through. Put a couple of pins in just to secure the bag but leave a little flap along that bottom. By pinning it we're going to be able to work on it without it shifting. We need to do one row of stitching along the bottom first but we need to lift up this top layer. We now have three layers along the bottom. Now stitch from one edge to the other. You can use a quarter inch seam allowance or a half an inch, whatever you feel comfortable using. When that bottom has been stitched, now we're going to be able to fold this bag bottom over, finish pinning it, and now we can stitch going from one side, coming down, and right off the end. And we get to do that to both sides. So we're going to have an opening along this edge. I have the three edges stitched with a hole in the center and an opening between those layers. We can now trim off those little points leaving a quarter inch to a half inch seam allowance. We're going to be able to turn this bag right side out through this really big opening and smooth out all those seams. The bag is still in reverse. We're going to be able to turn it right side out after but we get to finish that bottom off. We can take this top layer which has those three layers together and fold it along that stitching line. Bottom piece will be folded so those seams are going to match and a little whip stitch will close that up. With that little bottom seam finished up, the bag is done and is reversible. So if we choose to use it this side, we just get to poke that hanger in, find that hole and let that top hook come through. So we have a nice big opening that we can reach inside and if we'd like we can reverse it. Find that opening, poke that hanger out. I now have the different side. Of course we can always use it for our clothes pins but we can also have this sitting beside our machine so that we can put our scraps in it. This can also go in our closet so that we can put scarves and jewelry in the bags to match the items that we are going to wear. 
It's great for traveling. Another thing is the bathroom. We can put toiletries in here. And I'm sure we could find a lot of things to use this for when it comes to a child's room. You can use any hanger size that you want. The hanger that I used was 14 inches. And you can also use any size you want for the opening. You just have to keep in mind that you do need to put your hand in, so you're going to need some space. And four fat quarters. And we have the clothespin bag done. I'm sure we can think of a lot more than clothespins to keep in these bags. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.